Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for accepting uh, to have an interview uh, with with me. Um, International Children's Center recently, actually last year, uh, launched a, a YouTube channel, I, I, uh, Children's Rights TV, to inform uh, public in Turkey, uh, uh, NGOs, and other stakeholders uh, about uh, different child rights issues. Um, and this year we've. Uh, recently, we are going to start a new campaign on uh, sexual violence against children. Uh, it is a part of the uh, Council of Europe campaign and it is linked to Lanzarote uh, Convention. And, um, well, first, can you uh, introduce yourself to the audience? Yes. Yeah. Uh, my name is Jayas Capucci and I am the secretary of the committee of the parties to the Convention you have mentioned, which is the monitoring body of the Convention itself, and it is known as the Lanzarote Committee. Thank you. And I am Raki Kudbranson, uh, Director General of the Committee of Child Protection in Iceland, and currently the Vice Chair of the Lanzarote Committee. Thank you. Can, can you first uh, let us know what is this Lanzarote uh, Convention and the Committee? Well. The convention is um, the first sort of binding international tool that specifically addresses the protection of children against sexual exploitation and sexual abuse. It is extremely comprehensive in nature. It covers the whole area from prevention to intervention. Uh, it covers investigation, prosecution, uh, support for child victims, uh, uh, therapeutic intervention for perpetrators, it covers international cooperation, and I could continue and continue. And, and I'll carry on explaining what the committee is. Uh, within the context of the Council of Europe, the committee is a monitoring body which has a double role. Uh, firstly, of course, its role is to monitor how the Convention is uh, applied by the states who have accepted it and ratified it. And secondly, it is like a platform where states come together to share uh, good practices and to learn from each other, and thus to build their capacity and better protect children against them. How does uh, the committee work? Will it accept individual complaints? Uh, will it accept uh, collective complaints like the Social Rights Committee of the Council of Europe? Let me answer this one. Um, the, for the moment, the committee is uh, acting on the basis of responses it will get to a questionnaire it has sent out to states and civil society representatives. It will assess the replies provided uh, on a specific part of the convention, which uh, for the beginning of the monitoring is uh, looking at the sexual abuse of children in the circle of trust. So it will look at what states uh, uh, tell it concerning measures taken in this regard, and also what civil society will say to complement what states are saying. It is not foreseen uh, uh, in the convention itself that there are mechanisms such as the collective complaints procedure of the European Committee for Social Rights, nor are there any individual complaints as with the, the European Court of Human Rights, because these two mechanisms are within the Council of Europe, and therefore they may be used in cases of sexual abuse and sexual violence to complement what has been added to the system with this specific convention and committee. Um. So these questionnaires, will they be open to all? Uh, can any NGO, uh, for example, uh, fill out this questionnaire and uh, get it back to uh, the committee, Lanzarote committee? Yeah, the, the questionnaire will be sent to the member states, to the governments of the member states, uh, but the civil society NGOs can uh, uh, reply, can have the questionnaire, and can reply, respond to the issues that the questionnaire raises. The questionnaires are public, they are on the internet of the, of the Lanzarote Committee, which is easily accessible going on the Council of Europe webpage, and uh, uh, anyone wishing to reply to it may reply to it. 
the committee then will decide which information is relevant for its assessment. But uh, the, the questions are open. They're open. Uh, will there be a, uh, for example, for NGOs, will there be a accessibility or, or um, I don't know. Uh, International NGOs participate in the meetings of the committee. Mm -hmm. For the moment, we have participation by ECFAT, and Save the Children, ENASCO, Terre des Hommes, uh, and also um, the Council of Europe has a conference of international NGOs, which is represented in the committee. And that conference gathers a lot of NGOs. But you're also expecting uh, replies from local NGOs or national NGOs as well? That is possible. That is possible. Yes. Uh, the, um, the replies may be made public if the NGO so requests. So if the national NGO asks for its replies to be, allows us to make them public, they will also be on our website. How uh, will the committee uh, uh, reflect on these uh, questionnaires and, for example, Will the committee issue uh, a statement towards the government, or um, what will it do? Well, the committee will, will make a general uh, report, not a country-specific report, but thematic reports on the uh, uh, monitoring findings. It, it is still in the make, the committee is still discussing on how, because it is a new committee, how it will actually build up its uh, report, uh, but it has decided that it will be as uh, this uh, good uh, has just said, uh, thematic, and it will cover all the states' parties at the same time, uh, singling out uh, uh, what works well, uh, in these states' parties, but also, of course, uh, putting the spotlight on what needs to be improved or what is uh, actually lacking or going wrong. And it will take time to produce this report. Uh, the committee is, has uh, envisaged that its first report in, on this team uh, should be ready after 18 or so months. So you could expect something by the end of 2016. So uh, there is not going to be a uh, new questionnaire every year? No. So the questionnaires uh, will be on, on a needs basis? Well, that remains to be seen uh, how, uh, how fast, how frequently the questionnaire will be sent out. This depends uh, to some extent on the uh, number of uh, member states that uh, ratify the convention. At present, there are almost, yeah, yeah. almost 30 ratifications. And one would expect that in the coming future, more uh, member states will ratify. Uh, all uh, member states have uh, signed the convention, but one is expected that the number of member states that will ratify, will increase rather rapidly during the coming years. Turkey has, of course, ratified, and therefore we are expecting uh, the Turkish authorities uh, to provide the responses to the question uh, by the end of January, like all others who have uh, ratified, and therefore uh, the Turkish situation will be part of what will be assessed in the first report the first. of the Commission. And after the first report, do you envisage uh, more frequent reports or more frequent uh, questionnaires and reports? Well, this stage is, is difficult, difficult to tell, but uh, this procedure allows for um, the identification of, of a second thematic round, and uh, if that hasn't been decided as yet, what uh, topic will be addressed at that time? What has been decided so far is that the first theme I referred to before, uh, protection of children against sexual abuse in the circle of trust, uh, will be dealt with in two reports. Uh, the first one, as mentioned, will be hopefully uh, ready before the end of 2016, 
and it will look more into the legal framework uh, of protection against this kind of crime, whilst the second uh, report will look more into the uh, measures taken by states in, uh, with regard to prevention and protection uh, more specifically. Thank you. Thank you for, again, uh, for the interview and uh, uh, thank you for the information and your expertise. And good luck for the campaign. Thank you.